coffee. Coffee no! <laughs> Welcome back to the Cooner Report. This is Jeff Cooner, Boston's bulldozer. 617-266-6868 is the number. We are now joined by the one and only Walid Shubat, international expert on terrorism, Mideast expert. Uh, you've heard him here before. You love him. Walid, thank you so much for coming back on the Cooner Report. You bet. Thank you for having me. Uh, Walid, uh, we're going to be breaking some news here uh, very soon in terms of what's happening with you and the harassment by, it appears, by the government. But before we get into that, uh, you have been writing some brilliant, insightful, devastating blogs on Shubat.com where you say that following the Syrian civil war, you're quite convinced that the chemical weapons attack, which now Obama says requires an American military response, you believe was not committed by the Assad regime, but in fact was committed by the rebels themselves. Am I accurate? That is correct. Why do you think that? Well, you know, if you look at several investigations done in Syria, even by the Syrian government, in which they reveal several warehouses that were captured that has chemical weapons, one in Jobar, one in Banyas, We've had this scenario before in Khan al-Asal, in which the United States accused Syria of the same thing. And uh, you had United Nations inspectors who stated, who know, who know what they're talking about, and stated that it was the rebels who used it. Uh, doctors, witnesses, there isn't a single uh, you know, doctor in Syria that would say, oh, yes, it was the, uh, the government had used it. They've treated many cases in Khan al-Asal. Then you have a case... The Turkish government itself, a few months ago, have captured 12 terrorists from al-Nusra, in which they found two kilos of sarin gas. Uh, so uh, the chemical was caught on the hands of terrorists. The Russian government demanded and made a great case regarding this issue and demanded that the Turkish government uh, give uh, more information on the issue, which they refused to do so. Uh, you have even a, a Nusra terrorist. We have showed the recording of a Nusra terrorist telling the Syrian army, if you get to, 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 to come closer or to even become victorious against us, we're going to use chemical. Uh, we have even recordings in which rebels were shooting chemicals and saying, you know, uh, loading one sarin, you know, casing uh, on the recording. So if the government talks about capturing recording, by the uh, uh, Syrian regime discussing the issue of uh, setting gas or using gas, well, we have the same thing on the rebels. But even the question regarding what the government has is questionable. The Syrian government itself wanted to examine whether it was, because when the attacks happened, the Syrian government wanted to examine, make sure that none of their uh, uh, soldiers have used any chemical weapons. They've looked into it, and there is no so far, no evidence, no smoking gun. In fact, even Cameron himself, Great Britain, during the debate in the parliament, says we don't have a smoking gun, even though he's arguing for the attack against Bashar al-Assad. He says we don't have the smoking gun. Is there any government official in the United States that could say we have the smoking gun, that the government, the, the Syrian regime, have used chemical weapons? So, you know, we've, we've had this kind of thing happen when Saddam Hussein supposedly was building weapons of mass destruction and we've attacked Iraq, uh, do, do we have any evidence of weapons of mass destruction? So this is not the first time. We cried wolf before, now we're crying wolf again, and we're not examining ourselves as a country. We are the greatest country in the world. We should know better whether we have the smoking gun or we don't have the smoking gun. We're Plus, talking we, with, sorry, sorry, Wally, go ahead. No, that's fine. Uh, we're talking with Walid Shubat, uh, international expert on terrorism and the Middle East. Walid, let me ask you then this question, and it's the $64,000 question. Yes. If it looks like maybe the rebels were the ones that used the chemical weapons attack outside of Damascus, and we know that they have chemical weapons, and we know that they've used chemical weapons in the Syrian civil war, why is Obama hell-bent on dragging this country into a war that Congress doesn't want and the American people don't want? Why did we go to war with Saddam Hussein? Uh, it was the interest of Saudi Arabia. You have prominent individuals who say the same thing. Joseph Budansky, 
even Rush Limbaugh discussed it, what Joseph Budansky stated, that the CIA even worked with the Turkish government, the Saudis, possibly the Qataris, and knew in advance that the FSA had and will land these chemical attacks as well. You know, you have Dale uh, Kalvik of the uh, Associated Press writer talked about Prince Bandar and the Saudi government. So we are doing the, bid, doing the bidding for the interest of the Saudi government. This has been historically true when it comes to the Middle East. The Saudis are very much afraid of Iran and its constituency, which is in this case, you know, Hezbollah, you'd have Syria, and they want to convert that specific region into a Sunni alliance. And so it is within the interest of Saudi Arabia to remove the Alawite government, which is run by Haf Bashar al-Assad, the son of Haf al-Assad, in which they want to establish a Sunni rule. This is the interest of Turkey as well. Saudi Arabia is terrified of Iran. Saudi Arabia is terrified of the Shiites. This has been a divide, historical divide, of immense proportion historically that will never end. We're getting ourselves involved in a war, involved in a strife that we shouldn't be involved in. We're not looking at the struggling of the Christians in Syria. Go to the village of Malula, population 5,000. Look what the free Syrian army, the rebels, are doing there to the Christians. They are terrorizing them. They are threatening them whether they convert to Islam or get beheaded. You know, who is talking about Ma'lula? Who is talking about the Christians of Syria? You name me one Christian in Syria who will tell you Bashar al-Assad is persecuting them. They will all tell you that the Free Syrian Army, the Al-Qaeda-like operatives in that region coming from all over Timbuktu of the Middle East, whether they come from Libya, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and any part of the Arabic world, they all come as an influx into that nation to remove Bashar al-Assad, to establish an Islamic state. What, no matter what you look, if you look at McCain's task force, he's talking about the Syrian Emergency Task Force. It's been known that several of their operatives support the Muslim Brotherhood. They support the Islamist regime. Some of the members were part of MSA, dealt with the ISNA, AMC, Abdul Rahman al Amudi, who's in prison. Those are the kind of elements that we're working with, supposedly, to aid the Syrian rebels. And this, this is the pride of McCain and the pride of Obama, of all these so-called, you know, secular movement in Syria. There is no secular movement in Syria. The largest terrorist organization that is operative is al-Nusra. It is al-Qaeda. It is considered a terror state officially. The State Department recognizes al-Nusra as a terror state. We are aiding and abetting terrorism. So we don't have a war on terror. We are aiding terror. So that we have to ask ourselves, why are we aiding terror? It has to be for ulterior motives of the service to Saudi Arabia. We've made a deal with Saudi Arabia historically that we will always defend and do the bidding for Saudi Arabia. And that's what we're doing. If indeed President Obama cares about genocide and the massacring of people and humanitarian rights, why does he not look towards the government of Sudan? In fact, it was President Obama who stopped the, 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 Prime Minister, the president of Sudan uh, from defending themselves from northern Sudan, the Islamist part of northern Sudan attacks the Christian part in South Sudan. Look into that issue and see how much President Obama stands with the Christian south of Sudan. He is against it. If he, if he wants to really do some justice, go no further. Go visit his brother, Malik Obama, who aids and abets the government of Sudan. He is officially the executive director of the Islamic Da'wah organization, a terror state, this is a job working with terrorists. In fact, the Egyptian government itself has filed cases against President Obama's brother with evidence showing that President Obama's brother aids and abets the terrorists. Now, Waleed, this is very important because it's going to lead to what I think is going to be a newsmaking interview right now. You have been one of the few brave, courageous scholars and writers in this country, Shubat.com, where you have been documenting President Obama's brother and his ties to radical Islam and terrorist organizations. You've just touched on it a little bit now. For the American public, for the audience of Cooner Country, can you explain to them what is going on with Obama's brother and what are his ties to radical Islam? Obama's brother, and not only his brother, but his grandmother, his cousin Musa Ismail Obama, his uncle Saeed Obama, 
we have the photos, we have the interviews, we have a, a litany of evidence in which even on Al Jazeera, Musa Ismail Obama, his cousin, stated that they raise funds in the United States for recruitment in the most virulent Wahhabi schools in Saudi Arabia. One of them is Umm Al Qura University, which is the university founded by Muhammad Abdul Wahhab, the founder of Wahhabism himself. We were on the cutting edge in revealing the family connections with the Wahhabists, not just, you know, the Muslim Brotherhood and this kind of thing, but the Wahhabists as well in Saudi Arabia, in which they get grand treatment by the Saudi government, in which they clearly stated that they are raising these funds from the United States for recruitment to madrasas, which is really the hub and the training ground for terrorists. Now, President Obama's brother, Malik, or Obongo Obama, he is the executive director of the Islamic Dawah Organization, Branch Sudan. Sudan is recognized as a terror state. You know, Omar al-Bashir, who we have the photos showing him working with Omar al-Bashir, who's wanted for seven counts in the International Criminal Court. We were on the cutting edge of obtaining the photos, obtaining the meetings, obtaining the details of Obama's brother working with Sarwar Dahab, who goes to Hamas and encourages Hamas, telling them that they're about to destroy Israel, who works with the spiritual head of the Muslim Brotherhood, Sheikh Yusuf al-Qaradawi. This is his boss. We have them together in, a, in these meetings, in these events of fundraising. You have Lewis Lerner, who okayed illegally, the IRS illegally permitted President Obama's brother to gain a 501c3 illegally while they knew what he was doing. Now, somebody could tell me this is only Obama's brother. Obama is not related to what his brother does. Now, the might of the CIA, sorry, the IRS, allows President Obama's brother to get a 501c3, knowing what he's doing with his money in support for terrorist causes. They allow this to happen because the name Obama was used. That should be illegal. You cannot use the president's name for nefarious dealings in the Middle East. Secondly, the government of Egypt itself, Tahani al Jebeli, who was the judge in the Constitutional Court of Egypt, is, has their firing charges there with the district attorney. They have more evidence that, is, uh, that they say that Obama's brother was seen operating in terrorist military uh, installments in Mali, in Africa. And those are the, this is the kind of evidence they want to present to the Egyptian court in Egypt. This hasn't came out yet. And that's what they're talking about in Egypt. The government of Egypt is not haphazardly filing charges against Obama's brother. They have the evidence. They've used some of the evidence that I've worked with. So if the government of Egypt sees through that President Obama and family is involved in supporting the Muslim Brotherhood. Why would it be that President Obama would be upset when the Muslim Brotherhood was ousted by valiant, courageous Egyptians who finally said enough is enough? Mohammed Mursi brought 2,000 terrorists who were wanted under the death penalty in the, in the, in the, in the, in the uh, military courts in Egypt. He brought them into Egypt from Al-Qaeda. He brought terrorists from Bosnia from Pakistan, from Afghanistan. Where is the war on terror? Why would we not rejoice if a CC ousted the element of terrorism in Egypt, if indeed President Obama is on a war rampage against terrorism? We're talking with Walid Shubat, one of the world's leading experts on terrorism on the Middle East. Now, Walid, we wanted to have you on live a couple days ago to explain to us what's happening in Syria and the ties of Obama and his, and his uh, Muslim brother, Malik, and everything that Malik has been doing regarding his connections with radical Islam. Then we got a shocking text, an email, from one of your associates, and I want you to lay out this story to the American people, because what it now appears to be happening is because of your courageous investigative reporting, you now are claiming you are the victim of government-sponsored harassment by the Obama regime, correct? That is correct. 
What what well, is happening, Walid? Are you, what's happening with your phones? What has been going on? What kind of harassment and intimidation and persecution have you been enduring? First of all, I got I know that they are very upset at what I am doing regarding President Obama's brother because the Blaze called me. They've called the government asking them to comment on some of my research in which the government expressed that they are very upset that the president is upset about the things that we are doing regarding this family. Okay, so now we know that the government, they're they trying to even deny that my translation is accurate. So I asked the Blaze to ask the government to give us the correct translation regarding the issues that we brought, whether it's from Egypt, them claiming that they're charging President Obama with supporting terrorism or not. So far, I haven't seen the government give an alternative translation to my work regarding the Obama family. Okay, then you begin for, for several months. You, you would see your telephone says busy when you try to use your telephone, which means they tap into your telephone without the ringer going on in which they can hear and listen to what you are saying inside the house. And then one point in time, this busy signal remained indefinite. Somehow it got messed up, and we had to call the telephone company, in which the telephone company said this is the most unusual thing they've ever seen. When I asked the telephone company to change my telephone number, they looked into my records and the operative who's working on the other line says, in my life, I've never seen something on your file that I've seen ever before. I can't tell you what it is. I need to speak to my supervisor. Bingo. That tells me there is something going on. They're listening into my home. And then you get this harassment phone calls, several per day. And then I have one interview, a pre-recorded Okay, and hold on, Waleed, before you get to the interview, what kind of harassment phone calls have you been getting? All sorts of noises, sounds you know, hanging up, uh, it, just, it just doesn't reveal anything to you. It's just harassment. That's all it is. Uh, you know, I've, I've spoken to uh, security forces that I've known, friends of mine, and they said we're in the fifth generation harassment by the government, and they have very sophisticated system. You can never trace any of the numbers. Every time you try to trace those numbers, you cannot trace the numbers. It's done by professionals, they told me. It is a professional entity that is doing this, and is very likely the United States government. Uh, now, Walid, now then, this is what really sent chills down my spine. So you do a pre-taped interview, a pre-recorded interview. It hasn't aired yet. And what happened? Right. What happened? Right. In fact, the interview was Rick, Rick Wiles, uh, a Christian TV station, uh, sorry, radio station, in which we're good friends and we interviewed before. We finished the pre-recorded interview. Several minutes later, I get called from one of these phone calls, and my pre-recorded interview is played on my, to my ear. They're playing my interview. And not only are they are playing the interview to my ear, but they're, make, they're making it like it's a, it's a jockey at the end of the, of, the, of the line in which they're repeating the same words again and again and again, you know, making it go back and forth, you know, so it could become a nuisance to my ear and it is the recording that I just did five minutes before with Rick Wiles. I called Rick Wiles asking him, you know, uh, why is the recording that we had is being played to me? You know, have you done anything? He was also very shocked. He says, what are you talking about? I didn't call you to play the recording to you. So it is somebody who can tap into your telephone. In fact, this conversation we're having right now is being tapped by the government. So it's, it's somebody with sophistication that can tap into your telephone. This is not harassment calls only. This is someone who can record every single conversation you have. They wanted me to know that we are watching you, that we are after you. Even when I'm traveling on my cell phone, I call my son. My line goes to a different line in which it is a harassment call again. And my son says, I hear the ring coming from you, but I say hello and nobody can answer on the other line. And this is the kind of thing they're doing to us. They're trying to make me tired, to exhaust me. But they do not understand. I'm a Christian from the East. I am not one of those Christians you watch on television. Um, we are people who will, are willing to die. And this is to the United States government. You can, they can bother me. They can harass me. They can destroy me. They try to. It doesn't matter. Nothing is going to stop an Eastern Christian from fighting this fight. I am not from the Middle West. I'm from the Middle East. Just as I was a stubborn when I was a terrorist, I'm stubborn as a Christian. Nothing can stop us from revealing the truth to the American people. 
Uh, Walid, let me just ask you this then, one final question. You believe, and you're going to say this, you're on the record, you believe the Obama regime, the Obama administration, the U.S. government is deliberately harassing, targeting, and spying on you because of your investigative work, not just regarding Syria, not just regarding the ties to Saudi Arabia, but in particular because of his brother, Malik's brother's involvement with radical Islam, correct? That is correct. This is what we believe, and this is what we learned from the blaze uh, when they called the government asking them to comment, and the comments, their comments clearly stated that they are very, very upset at the work we're doing. Are you going to move? Are you making any plans to leave, or are you going to stay and, and, and hunker down? Uh, as I said before, I'm hunkering down. It is till death do us part. The government needs to understand the type of Christians they're dealing with. We are not the kind of Christians that will go silent. We are more encouraged by the harassment. It will continue to encourage me to understand that persecution is part and parcel of this faith that I believe in. So nothing will stop me. It will simply encourage me. Let them bring it on. Bring on the whole world. Nothing can stop us from standing and fighting the fight as Christians. For years, people are ashamed to be called Christians in this country. For years... We count out to all kinds of ism in this world, compromising our faith and what we stand for. We are not compromising. We will never compromise. We should never compromise in what we believe. We have been talking with Walid Shubat, uh, international expert on terrorism and the Middle East, critic of the Obama regime. Walid, where can people go? And I'm sure a lot want to. Where can they go? to uh, buy your books, read your blogs, read your writings? Shubat.com, just as you spell the word shoe, S-H-O-E, bat, B-A-T, Shubat.com. Now I'll be accused of doing it for selling books. The, <laughs> might of, the might of CNN internationally try to destroy me for selling books at an event and selling Christian books. The might of CNN try to slander me, nothing but slander, and it never stopped us. CNN failed. The government will fail. The whole world will fail. The only thing that will separate us from the love that we have for God is death. So they have to come and kill us if they want to. They're welcome to do so. I am awaiting. We have been talking with Walid Shubat. Walid, stay safe. God bless you, my friend. And we'll get you back on the Kuna Report soon. Take care. God, God bless you as well. Coffee. Coffee now! Woo! <laughs>